Hello and welcome to the Tennessee Virtual College Fair. Thank you for joining us this evening. Just a few housekeeping announcements before we get started with the presentations. You can use the Q&A button on your screen to type your questions to our presenters at any time. And if your question is for one specific presenter or school, make sure you put their name into the question so that they know it's for them. Your cameras and microphones are all off, so the panelists cannot see or hear you. So just sit back, relax, and, and concentrate on the great information you're going to get over the next 45 minutes. This presentation is being recorded. It'll be available within about a week at the same website where you registered for this presentation. I want to remind you of the, of the schools presenting to, in tonight's session. It is session C2. Once the menu gets out of the way there, you'll see it at the bottom center part of the screen. Session C2, those are the six schools presenting and the order of their presentations. I've gotten all the housekeeping stuff out of the way, so I will step out of the way and turn it over to our first presentation tonight. The representative from Western Kentucky University. All right, good evening, everybody. We appreciate you taking the time out of your day to come and learn a little bit more about what we can offer you. My name is Morgan Terry. I'm the representative for Western Kentucky University for the whole state of Tennessee. And I wanna get this out of the way to begin. All residents of the state of Tennessee actually get in-state tuition here at WKU. Nothing special you gotta to do to earn it. We're more affordable than the vast majority of Tennessee state schools. And we have a ton of awesome scholarship opportunities as well. If affordability is a concern, don't let it be. Apply, get admitted, and we'll do whatever we can to make WKU as affordable as possible for you guys. For those of you who may be a little unfamiliar with WKU, we are located in Bowling Green, Kentucky. We recently voted as a top 10 college town in America and as the number one place to live in the state of Kentucky. We're just an hour north of Nashville, about three hours from Chattanooga, and also about three hours from Knoxville as well. And if your parents are a little concerned about WKU, I always let them know that in addition to us offering in-state, my favorite thing about WKU is that we're one of only four schools in the entire country that has been designated as a safe community of America by the National Safety Council. Quick snapshot of our campus. Our community is technically 20,000 students. However, here on the main campus, it's about 15,000. The rest of the students are either online or at some regional campuses that we have throughout the state of Kentucky. Average class size is technically 24, but once you get into your major specific courses, you know, around sophomore year or so, it's going to be about 15, 16 or so on average. Your professor is going to know your name. They're going to know where you've come from, and they're going to know what you want to do with your life, and they're going to help you get there. Now, when people ask me to describe WKU in one word, that one word that I use is opportunity because we have a ton of them. Over 150 different academic programs. Over is at this point, it's actually 400 different student clubs and organizations. And we put our money where our mouth is at WKU. If you're willing to work hard, so are we. And so we're going to give you all the help you need. Free tutoring for every student. Every department has a help center. And there's a general career services office for the whole university and, speci and specific ones for each academic unit. Now, I don't want to spend a ton of time on our programs, but a couple of years ago, we were ranked literally number one overall in the entire country for nursing. Our uh, med school acceptance rate is literally 30 points higher than the national average. We were recently ranked as the fourth best school of media in the entire country. We have a world-class engineering program with great ties to Chevrolet. And then also our business school at WKU is ranked as the top 20 business school in the entire country as well. And all the business programs and about 45 other programs that we have at WKU, what we call jump programs. That stands for Joint Undergraduate Master's Program. What that means is certain classes you take for your undergrad degree will also count for your master's degree. It's just going to take you one additional year after you graduate with your undergrad and four to get your master's. That's an unbelievable opportunity there, especially if you're going to come for one of our uh one of our business programs there. Be able to get your master's in five years, that's an unbelievable opportunity. A couple of other additional opportunities I always like to mention is Greek life here at WKU. It is a big deal on campus, but you don't have to be part of that to be uh, in, to you know get accepted to all their events and things like that. Religious clubs and campus ministry is also big. We do have a computer lab, no need to buy one just for college. You can bring a car to campus, but you don't need one either. We have a great bus system that drives people all the way around campus. If you graduate high school with at least a 3.0 unweighted GPA, we do only use unweighted GPAs. But if you graduate with at least a 3.0 unweighted GPA, you're going to be getting some scholarship money here. 3 to a 3.2 is 2,500 bucks a year. 3.3 three to a 3.4 is 3,000. And 3.5 and above is $4,000 per year. We also have an $8,000 per year award if you have a 3.8 and a 28 on your ACT. 
We also have a great Cherry Presidential Scholarship and a top dollar scholarship, which means you just have to complete one application. It'll search that 1,200 other opportunities we have for you guys, and it'll let you know which ones you're eligible for. The application process is super straightforward. You can do it in 15 to 20 minutes. Go to wku.edu, click on apply, fill out our primary application for admission. That's just going to take you 15 minutes. What's your name? Where you're from? What do you want to study? That type of stuff. No essays, no letters of recommendation required, nothing like that. We do have a $45 application fee, but we can waive that if you're on free or reduced lunch at your school or if your school pays for you to take a free ACT or SAT. In addition to that, we will need a copy of your transcript. We'll have to get that directly from one of your high school counselors. We are technically test optional. If you have a 2.5 unweighted GPA or above, we don't need your ACT score for admission. If you're between a 2 and a 2.49, we still encourage you, uh, you're going to have to submit it there, but we still encourage everybody to submit their ACT scores as it can affect certain scholarships. But that's about all that I have for you guys this evening. If you haven't been to our campus, please come check it out. We are frequently ranked as one of the most beautiful campuses, not just in the Southeast, but in the entire country. And we love to show it off. Again, we want you guys to know that we're here for you at WKU. Shoot me an email. Give me a call if you have any questions. I'm happy to help out however I can. One of our big things on the Hill is making sure that you guys have all the information you need up front so you can make an informed decision about the college search process. But again, my name is Morgan Terry. Let me know how I can help you and your family. I'd be more than happy to do so. Thanks again for sharing part of your evening with us. Go Tops. Morgan, thank you very much. And I want to remind everyone, if you have questions for any of our presenters, make sure you use the Q&A button. And if it is a question for a specific school, make sure you name the school in your question so that they know it is for them. Up next, we will hear from the representative from Johnson and Wales University. All right, let me uh, bring up my screen here. Yay, there we go. Well, good evening. My name is Paul Carney and I'm an admissions rep with Johnson and Wales University. Uh, my territory includes Tennessee, Kentucky, Alabama, Mississippi, Arkansas, and Louisiana. I live in Knoxville, Tennessee. This is my hometown. I uh, lived in Virginia for about 10 years and I'm in my 25th year of college admissions and worked at several different institutions. And so I'm gonna tell you a little bit about Johnson & Wales. There we go. We have two campuses. Our main and original campus is in Providence, Rhode Island, which is the state capital of Rhode Island. It's about 40 miles southwest of Boston. And it's about 20 miles from Foxborough, Massachusetts, where Gillette Stadium is located, uh, where the New England Patriots play. We also have a campus in downtown Charlotte, North Carolina. And uh, our campus there sits right next to Bank of America Stadium, uh, where the Carolina Panthers play. Uh, we were founded in Providence in 1914. And uh, we have about 10,000 students on our Providence campus and about 2000 at our Charlotte campus. So if you're looking for, you know, like a medium to large university feel, we have that. If you're looking for more of a small campus feel, we have that as well. Uh, we offer about 50 different undergraduate majors from six undergraduate colleges, including our College of Arts and Sciences, Business, Health and Wellness, Culinary Arts, Design and Engineering, and Hospitality. We are probably most well known for our College of Culinary Arts. Uh, two of our most famous alumni are Emeril Lagasse and Tyler Florence, both of the Food Network fame. Uh, we're also very well known for our College of Business. Uh, one of our big partners is Bank of America, which has its headquarters in Charlotte. Charlotte is the second largest financial center in America, second only to New York City. So a lot of our Students there in the College of Business do a lot of internships with not only Bank of America, but all the, all the other financial centers as well. We have study abroad programs. We've got 80 programs in 40 countries around the world. And we do encourage students to take advantage of that opportunity if you can. Uh, a lot of employers nowadays are looking for people with global experience. They're looking for people who are bilingual or multilingual. And if you 
have global experience, if you speak more than one language, uh, you definitely will have a competitive advantage in this very competitive job market that we live in. We have about 150 student organizations, everything from major related clubs, such as our broadcasting club, if you're thinking about radio or television or print or online journalism, uh, we've got the Broadcasting Club. We have our International Fashion Society because we offer fashion merchandising as a major. But we have fun things that people like to do, uh, vocal ensemble, dance team, a ski club, mixed martial arts, anime and gaming, it, just about anything you can think of we've got on our campus. We compete in the Division Three in the NCAA. Uh, we've got just about every major sport you can think of. The only two major sports we do not offer are football and swimming and diving. And these are some of the championships our teams have won over the last few years. We do require all freshmen and sophomores to live in the residence halls. We do have residence halls on our campuses. Uh, they are very close to everything. So you'll never have to walk too very far for anything. You do not have to have a car uh, to get around Johnson Wales, you can get around just fine without one. But if you have a car and you want to bring it with you, you're more than welcome to do so. You'll just need to register that with parking services. All of this begins with an application. So you'll need to apply for admission. Uh, this is our website for our application. We are also a member of the Common App, and you can send us your application that way. We do not charge an application fee. It is completely free. We are also test optional, which means we do not require the ACT or the SAT for admission. About 91% of all of our students receive uh, institutional scholarships and or grants from Johnson & Wales. Uh, we do everything we can to make college very affordable for all of our students. If you're active in any of these national student organizations, we have very generous scholarship opportunities for those. We also have these clubs at the collegiate level at Johnson Wales as well. So a lot of students uh, who like to uh, participating in these clubs in high school frequently like to continue on with that at the college level as well. We are on social media, so you can learn things about us on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. We post information online every day about events going on on the campus. So that's a great way to check us out. We encourage you to visit campus as well. That's a really good way to get a, a feel for the place. And then finally, here's my contact information. If I can answer any questions for anybody, please type it into the chat feature or you can call me or email me or text me at any time. Thank you very much and have a great evening. Thank you, and I, again, want to reiterate that uh, if you have a question for any of our presenters, use the Q&A button and make sure that if it is for a specific school to name the school in your question. Going to once again remind everyone of the order of the six schools presenting during this session, which is C2, as you see on the screen that I'm sharing. So next up, we'll hear from the representative from the University of Colorado Boulder. All right, thank you very much. I'm gonna just gonna get my screen shared here. Get that pulled up. Uh, well, welcome everyone. Thank you for joining us. My name is Brad Clough and I'm the Senior Assistant Director at the University of Colorado Boulder. I am based in Nashville and work with all the students in the southeast of the U.S. except for Florida. I'm also joined by one of my colleagues, Blake, and she'll be taking all of your questions in the Q&A and joining us after for any questions that you might have. But just to give you a high level overview of who we are, this is a great picture. You really can't see a picture about CU Boulder without seeing our beautiful backdrop, the flat irons there, right? The foothills of the Rocky Mountains. Everything that you see there with the red roof is our campus, kind of giving you an idea of what the size is. We're about 35,000 total students. 29,000 of those are undergraduates. 42% of those students come from outside of the state of Colorado, all over the country, all over the world. And so even though we are a larger institution, we really want to stress your ability to interact with your faculty members. So we still have that 18 to one faculty, student to faculty ratio. Again, giving you all the resources of a large campus, but continue to, to emphasize those relationships. 
some of the things that we're most proud of are the things that our students are doing in and out of the classroom. Um, they're coming to us and wanting to have those positive impacts on society to be that change they see in the world. It's why we've been recognized as one of the top 25 colleges for students who want to change the world, whether that's by giving back to society through volunteerism, civic action, or through research in the classroom. Also, we're proud of the community that we're a part of. Boulder is an outstanding college town. You can see that we've received a ranking as one of the number one college towns in America. Also this year, that you, the US News and World Report just named Boulder as the number one place in America to live. And then you also have Denver, which is just 35 minutes down the road, which was number two on that list. You're really welcome not only to be a part of the university community, but also the Boulder community as well. So our students feel really comfortable making that transition forever, from wherever they call home when they join us at the university. Our students have an opportunity to study in over 100 different majors at the university in seven of these different colleges, schools, and programs. Students do apply directly to the program that they're interested in, if you know what that is. Um, if you're not sure what that is, that's totally okay. We actually have our program in exploratory studies for students who are undecided. And so you can enter that program and work with academic coaches to find your perfect path at the university for your intended career. In fact, about 25% of our students that started for fall of 2020 started in that program in exploratory studies. So totally okay not to have it all figured out. Um, our students, again, very active in all aspects of the campus community. If you're interested in study abroad, when the world opens back up to us, we have over 400 different programs in 65 different countries, some that may even start as early as your first year on campus. We are a tier one research university. We're recognized for the amount of undergraduate research that we do and the amount of money that goes towards that research. Our undergraduate research opportunities program will help connect you to faculty and staff who are doing research in your area of interest in 89 different research centers around campus, 11 different research institutes. So never a dull moment that you uh, won't find something that you want to do. Also, our students obviously take advantage of the great outdoors that surround us, a big draw for us at CU. There's that picture of the Flatirons again. We have over 300 plus days of sunshine in the state of Colorado, so it's a great way to take advantage of all four seasons that we have in the state, sometimes in the same day. Whether that's gonna be for going a simple, on a simple hike, right there in Chautauqua Park, which is about 15 minutes from campus that takes you right up into the Flatirons. If you're into skiing and snowboarding, obviously you have access to Breckenridge, Vail, Aspen, just a few hours from campus. But you have to also have Eldora, which is just 40 minutes from campus if you wanna get those quick runs in during the middle of the day. And you can see our football stadium there right in the middle of campus. We are a division one, we compete in the Pac-12 conference. So big time sports, big time stage, really enhancing that uh, uh, school spirit and great things to take advantage of if you are there as a student, whether you like football or not. So if all those things start to pique your interest and you're thinking about applying, when you apply, you will apply through the Common App. That's the only way to apply as a first year student. These are the required elements to send us for consideration for admission. I want to call out there the SAT or ACT scores. Like most many schools across the country, we are test optional for the fall of 2021. So really don't need to worry about sending those scores if you don't have them or you're not even happy with your score that you did have a chance. Our slogan here is when in doubt, apply without. Um, so just go ahead and get those applications in. Also, if you're thinking about merit-based scholarships, we won't be utilizing test scores at all, whether we have them on file or not for a stu student in the consideration for our automatic merit-based scholarships again. So hopefully reducing some of that stress that comes for applying to colleges and getting those scholarships in the days of COVID. Early important dates here, the application deadlines, November 15th is our early action date. January 15th is regular decision. No real difference between the two of these, except when you hear back. If you qualify early action, you'll hear back on before February 1st. If it's regular decision, on or before April 1st. So really encourage you with that month left, if you're still applying for fall 2021, get that in for early action. That's a brief overview of who we are. If you want to learn a little bit more about us, encourage you to go to our visit site, colorado.edu slash visit. Even though we're not able to welcome visitors, a ton of virtual content to engage with us, learn more about us, sample lectures, virtual tours, opportunities to have one-on-one -on -one appointments with myself, uh, with student ambassadors, to learn that student experience, student panels, just a ton of content that keeps getting updated every week. So really get a chance to learn about us. And then the final thing there is just my contact information. So if you have future questions, like I said, I'm gonna be working with all the students from the state of Tennessee as they explore the CU Boulder and possibly apply. So feel to reach out to me anytime. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. And once again, I will remind everyone, any questions, use the Q&A button. If it's for a specific school, name the school in your question. Up next, we'll hear from the representative from Samford University.
Sorry, everyone, just got to unmute. I hope you're doing well. Thank you so much for being here tonight. And for anyone who watches the recording, so glad you are here. My name is Emma Craig. I am the admission counselor from Stanford University that covers East and West Tennessee. I also cover part of Mississippi and a little bit, or all of Mississippi and a little bit of Arkansas. Thank you again for being here. I am going to show a quick presentation as well. If you have any questions, please feel free to always reach out to me. My email is emma.craig at samford.edu. And I'll remind y'all again after the presentation. So when I talk about Samford, I like to start off by explaining us as a little big school. What does that mean? It means we're a small school in the ways that we have small class sizes. So your average class size is about 18 to 20 students. You walk into a classroom and your professor knows who you are immediately. You're not drowning in a sea of students in a lecture hall wondering if your professor knows who you are or even not meeting your professor during the semester. It's great to have that kind of relationship here at Sanford. So again, small in the ways that you are designated to have specifically small class sizes based on whatever your major might be. Um, we are also, we always have uh, advisors for our students. So meaning you're gonna be designated a specific academic advisor for you, for your major, for what you wanna do and how you wanna reach your dreams. Um, a little bit about Sanford. We were founded in 1841. We're the 87th oldest institution in the nation. So we're rich with history and have tons of fun things that we have done since we have always started. If you've never heard of Stepsing or Sanford Gives Back or the traditions we have during finals week, please go look at those. Ask me about them. They're so fun. But kind of how we're small. Yes, we know that we're small. We have about 5,600 total students that are at Sanford, but we're also large. So we're in Birmingham, which is the biggest city in Alabama. That means that um, you are going to be um, having exposure and the opportunity to be plugged into different internships and amazing opportunities in Birmingham. We're super involved in the community. That's always been who we are and people know us as Sanford and Sanford students and we work hard and we're passionate about what we believe in. Uh, as you can see, we have division one sports that we we're offered on campus. I had the awesome opportunity to play soccer at Sanford, loved it, every single bit of it. I wanted that Friday night lights feel. I didn't want to lose that sports atmosphere. And I also love the opportunity of having Greek life organizations on campus and having that big school feel. Um, that's a huge opportunity here at Sanford. So again, about 5,600 total students. You can see that 70% of our students are from out of state. So coming from someone who is from in-state, I was shocked by that. I was really um, honestly in awe of the fact that everyone comes from different parts of the nation and even different countries. You can see that 13 to one student to faculty ratio. What does that mean? How does that apply to you? It means, like I said, you walk into a classroom setting, you have 18 to 20 people on average in your classroom. You're gonna have people paired with you, faculty mentors, your advisors, your faculty members that are your professors that really are plugging into who you are as a person. Kind of an overview of, of who we are again is, a little big school, offering those small school feels, also offering the big school feel. We are unapologetically a Christian college. It's who we are in all the traditions that we have ever since we've been founded. And truly, it's a great atmosphere to be surrounded by. Again, to note, you can see on the screen, 50 study abroad programs in over 13 countries, and those just continue to grow. So if there's a country you want to go to, you just tell someone and we'll figure out a way to get you there. It really is an awesome opportunity for students to go and see the world. How has COVID impacted Sanford? Well, 86% of our fall classes are actually in person. So if you come to campus and you visit right now, you're gonna see students walking around like nothing's really changed. You're gonna notice some mask wearing and some social distancing, yes. Um, but it's definitely amazing to have our freshman class move in, never experienced college before, and have the opportunity to really have that college experience they were looking for. Um, so being able to move everybody back on campus and have those in-person classes really has made a difference. As far as application components, we have had a couple components change because of COVID. We're obviously offering virtual opportunities due to COVID, but we want you to come to campus. We want you to see campus, see how lively it is. Even in the midst of a national pandemic, you can grow and see Sanford in person. As far as this timeline goes, really that's a lot of dates. I'm not gonna throw that many dates at you. I really just want you to remember one date, December 1st. So seniors, plug into this. We don't have an early admission deadline. We just technically have a rolling admission process. And that first admission scholarship deadline is December 1st. I tell all my students, try to get it in by then. Try to get your application in by then. It's super important in our process. And it shows that you really want to be here. And, and it really is awesome. I have had students that have applied in the spring, still receive scholarships, still got admissions to Sanford. And so 
excuse me, I wouldn't be too worried about something like that. Um, but I always stress it. Who wouldn't want to know their admission decision and their scholarship offer before Christmas, right? As far as our admission components here at Sanford, we have five different components we look at on an even playing field. So here at Sanford, we care about who you are as a person. Numbers are important, yes. If you're a great test taker and you have a great GPA, we're super excited and we're gonna reward you for that. You are deserving of that. But also, who are you as a person? If you're a really great leader, maybe not as strong, um, have, have not, excuse me, not have as strong as a, of a test score, then that's fine. What other accolades, what other characteristics do you have that can really get you um, to be successful in school? We're gonna look at all of this again on an even playing field to award admission and scholarship to Stanford. Your essay, test scores, high school transcript, and letter of recommendation are all very important to us through this process. Official test scores, have we have decided to go test optional this year. Don't stress about it. You can't control it, so don't let it affect your college process. Um, you can still receive admission and scholarship to Stanford without submitting a test score. As far as what our scholarships look like, when you apply to Stanford, you're automatically eligible to our largest merit-based scholarships, which are the Crossland and the Marion Scholarship. Um, you're eligible by all of those components I just mentioned. So we're gonna look at those, analyze them, give you admission to Sanford, and also a scholarship offer based off those components. Sherman Oak is our version of a legacy scholarship. So if you've had family come to Sanford, then you'll be awarded that. Why is that December 1st date so important that I mentioned? Because we have some other scholarship applications that are due then. So you wanna be able to apply to Sanford, have access to those scholarships, and be able to get those applications in before December 1st. Finally, number three, we have need-based aid at Sanford. The FAFSA is not required to come to Sanford, but if you need need-based aid, then we will require the FAFSA. I love this because we actually have a little bit of a different process here at Sanford. We know that the FAFSA doesn't always tell us the true story. And so we have a process where we can dive in and help families. Even if your FAFSA doesn't show us that we need help or that you need help, we can help you with that. Um, so know that that's always an offer as well. How do we award again merit-based scholarships, not a cross-grid system. We don't look just at ACT and GPA. It's who you are as a person. We know you have a story. So if you have more questions about Sanford, please let me know. Again, I am your admission counselor from Sanford University. My name is Emma Craig and my email is emma.craig at sanford.edu. Go Bulldogs! Emma, thank you very much and I want to remind everyone once again use the Q&A button for questions of any of our presenters and if your question happens to be for a specific school just make sure to name the school in your question. Up next we'll hear from the representative from the University of Louisville. What's up, y'all? My name is David. I am an admissions counselor for the University of Louisville. I'm based in Nashville, Tennessee, just like Brad is. You know, I work with Tennessee students and students from you know, across the South. Because I do live in Nashville, there's a bar across the street that is playing some country music. So maybe you're going to be having some country music going on in the background for you for this presentation. You know, There's my contact info. I want to be there to help you answer any questions that you have. So feel free to reach out to me. That is you know, me with a different haircut a couple of months ago. This is our campus. This is the University of Louisville's campus. We are located in Louisville, Kentucky, the largest economic city in Kentucky. So, you know, if you're coming from the Knoxville area, about a four, four and a half hour drive to get up to our campus. It doesn't look like we're in the city, but we are within the city limits. So downtown Louisville is 10 minutes down the road. But when you're on campus, you don't feel like, you know, you're downtown, you don't feel like you're in that hustle and bustle, you do feel like you're on a college campus, like a world into itself. But for students that are looking for that urban environment, they're looking to be somewhere where there's always something going on, you know, that's us, that's our campus. And I know you all in East Tennessee, uh, it's Rocky Top, Tilly, our campus has no hills, flat, easy to get around. You can get anywhere on our campus in 10 minutes. First time freshman students can bring a car. It's not necessary. Our students do have free access to the Louisville bus system. Here's some numbers that you know stand out about the University of Louisville. Oh, we're not that large of an institution. We're kind of a medium-sized school. So each year, around 3,000 full-time freshman students are entering the University of Louisville. Dual credit, you know, is big in Tennessee. So if you are taking any dual credit classes, dual enrollment, and you're want to know if they're going to transfer to us, the answer is probably yes. Uh, you know, 60% of students are bringing in dual enrollment credit with us. Um, and, you know, they're using that credit to help them with their cl classes. So at the University of Louisville, there are 12 academic colleges and schools. So starting with the College of Arts and Science, all the way down to the School of Public Health. Those are, you know, the colleges and schools that are open to you as an undergraduate student. Because we have a law school, a med school, and a dental 
home school on campus, we do see a lot of students that are interested in being a pre-health major. You know, they're a pre-professional major. They want to come to our campus, you know, study their undergraduate major, but then utilize the resources that are available on campus, but also within the city of Louisville to make them successful. We had over 6,000 students utilizing our career centers on campus to help them with internships, job shadowing. Some of our you know, academic majors and programs do have co-ops built into the programs. So just a little bit more about majors on the left-hand side, you know, these are some unique majors, different ones that you don't really see at a lot of schools. Uh, Louisville, the city is home to the Kentucky Derby. So if you are a horse person and you wanna be in the business of horses, equine business is on the academic common market and you get in-state tuition for uh, applying to that academic major. On the right-hand side, you can see some of our most popular majors. So we are you know, on campus, our students are there. If you wanted to come visit us, we are open for visits. So for the freshman students, they were seniors last year that are now on campus. Those were the most top 10 most popular majors that they were interested in. But there's a lot to cover and not a lot of time. Please search our catalog. You know, go online, search U L catalog, and you can see a list of all of our academic majors and minors. What's cool about the catalog is this flight plan button. You click that and boom, you're going to see a four-year breakdown of what your potential class schedule is going to look like. So your minds are going to be filled with a lot of info. Let's fill your stomachs too. These are all the great eats that are available on campus with your meal plan. And the stars indicate where students are living. You do have to live on campus for two years at the University of Louisville. We do have traditional suite and apartment style available. Most freshman students get traditional. The suite and apartment is more available to students going into their sophomore year or even their junior year. You know, we do have a lot of upperclassmen living on campus. 60% of students live on campus at U of L. And there are two residence halls with those pools. They're pretty nice. So let's talk about applying, getting admitted, scholarships. This can be a little bit confusing. That's why I do want you to reach out and ask any questions about this process. We are a rolling admission school, which means we're constantly turning over admissions decisions. So we don't really have a hard deadline on when you need to apply, but there are deadlines when it comes to scholarships. And that's going to be on my next slides I'm about to show. You can apply to us with test scores or without test scores. The way that admissions works at U L is we first admit you to the university and then we admit you to the academic major. So undecided students, absolutely be an undecided student. You don't really have to know what you want to be right now or what major you want. You can't apply as undecided because we admit you first to the university. If you're a student that is applying without test scores, the College of Business, the College of Nursing, and the College Business School of Nursing and I'm missing one, College of Business, Engineering and Nursing, all of those require test scores. Or if you apply as test score optional, there's another pathway, some additional steps that you have to take in order to try to get direct admissions into one of those three programs. So scholarships, right? How do we reduce the cost of going out of state? Because we are out of state for you. On the left-hand side, that's the scholarship program that's available to Tennessee students from East Tennessee. You do have to have those GPA and SAT at ACT scores and on, in order to unlock that amount of money. If you apply as a test optional student, you need a 3.0 GPA in order to unlock the scholarship application. If you're applying to us with test scores, there is no scholarship application. That scholarship is automatically awarded to you. And that's gonna help to reduce our total cost of attendance. And that's what it costs to attend U of L for one full academic year. For academically talented students, you have that 29 on the ACT and a 3.5. Those are the two special you know, programs that are available to you. I mentioned we're open. We want to get students on campus, get a feel for if they want to call Louisville home. So L's up. Thanks for joining us today. Have a good one and go Cards. Thank you very much. Once again, quick reminder, use the Q&A to ask questions of any of our representatives. And if it's for a specific one, just name the school in your question. Up next, we will hear from the University of Mississippi, better known as Ole Miss. Hi, everyone. I'm super excited to be with you all tonight. Um, my name is Carmen Morris. I am the admissions counselor for the University of Mississippi, also known and loving, lovingly known as Ole Miss. Um, I also have my colleague, Neil Ann Chambly. She's on here. So if y'all have any questions, feel free to reach out to us. She's based in Memphis and I'm based in Nashville. I recruit for the Middle and East Tennessee area. So super excited to be with you all on today. 
So the University of Mississippi, also known as Ole Miss, we were founded in 1848. We are simply known, we are simply known as the flagship university, which means that we were the first public university in the state of Mississippi. We represent about 17,000 undergraduate students, which represents um, all 50 states, all 82 counties in Mississippi, and about 80 to 90 countries globally. So I like to say that we have a little bit of everybody on campus. Um, um, we one thing that I love about Ole Miss is that we are 17 to 1 student to faculty ratio. So we actually have about 45 students to a teacher, professor in a classroom. So one thing that I love about that is you get that private school feel, but you also have the resources, amenities of a large institution. We're actually in the SEC. So out of the 14 SECs, we're about out of the 14 SEC schools, we're the third smallest. So again, you get that private school filled with a lot of amenities and resources, whether it's opportunities, professionally, academically, or socially. Um, as you all can see on this slide, we represent about 300 student organizations. So if you wanna get involved, again, if it's academically, professionally, um, we always have everyone getting involved in the community, Greek life, there's so many different activities to get involved in. And I love that because our students are doing so many great things on campus. We're actually located in Oxford, Mississippi, which is northern part of Mississippi. Uh, we're about four hours from Nashville, Tennessee, and about five hours from Chatt Chattanooga, Tennessee. So we're not too far. We were, we're within driving distance. So I always encourage you all to visit us because Oxford is an amazing town. We're also known as the best college town you'll visit. So um, we've been named that. Um, and I just love Oxford because it's steep in tradition, steep in culture, awesome experiences experiences, delicious food, and there's always something to do. Um, we're about 24,000 residents in the city of Oxford. So when students are on campus, that typically doubles. Um, again, so many awesome experiences and traditions in the city as well as on campus. So digging right into cost of attendance and scholarships. So we actually offer about two different types of scholarships. We have our merit-based scholarships, um, which is going to be based on your ACT and your GPA. Um, that's an automatic, which we have that information. Please, I highly recommend if you want more information, either contact Neil Ann or contact me in the chat box. Um, I'm going to leave my contact information at the very end. Um, and also, we do offer competitive scholarships. So once you apply, you have the opportunity to apply to our special programs and scholarship application. Um, it's accessible once you apply. All you have to put in is your application number and your date of birth. And it's competitive, but there's so many different opportunities. Um, I highly recommend if you get that opportunity to do so, um, you will be able to highlight yourself because during the admissions process, we don't require your test scores. However, for scholarship purposes and consideration, we will need your ACT scores. Um, so with that, I highly recommend you do that, but all you would need is an essay, um, your resume and recommendation letters. It really depends on the scholarship that you're looking into and the program you're looking into, um, but do that. The deadline is January 5th. So I highly encourage y'all to do that if you get that opportunity too. Um, if you're interested in applying, there's two ways that you can apply. You can either go to omis.edu forward slash apply. That is through our inst institutional app. Um, or you can simply go through the Common app. I like to do the institutional app because it's user friendly, very quick, accessible. Definitely um, would like for y'all to do that. Um, but all of this information is right here. Senior ACT scores, if you like. Also senior high school transcript. And it usually takes about seven to 10 business days for us to assess and make a decision. This is my contact information. Feel free to contact me, um, email me, text me. Calendly, send an appointment. I love to meet with you and your family. And I hope y'all have a great night. Hotty toddy. Thank you very much. And as we uh, have a couple minutes left in this session, I'd like to invite our representatives to turn their cameras and microphones back on. I'll do a quick little uh, pretend talk show here. And um, we'll have you answer questions in the same order that you presented. And this will allow time for to clean up any of the Q&A to make sure we have enough time to get to those questions over the last five minutes of this session. So the question I'll just ask tonight we only have really uh, 
room for one question here, is what is your favorite campus or school tradition? Uh, it's your opportunity to kind of share a little more uh, information about the campus vibe and some of the traditions there. So again, your favorite campus or school tradition, we'll start with Western Kentucky University. Absolutely. So my personal favorite tradition we have at WKU is something called Master Plan. It's basically, uh, an ex it's not orientation, but students, it's all for all freshmen students, they move in a week early to campus. And during that week, they actually will go through sessions where they will actually have an opportunity to meet literally every other incoming student at WKU before classes even start. Uh, throughout uh, the week as well, there's going to be different night events. Um, so KG Elephant came and did a free concert for us last year. They're WKU alumni. And there's usually a concert, paint parties, pet parties, uh, things along those lines. So it's just a great week for everybody to get familiar with the campus uh, community before even, you know, you get into the nitty gritty of things. Excellent. Now, uh, Johnson and Wales. It's actually kind of the same thing. It's the Wildcat Welcome Weekend, uh, where you come, you know, during move in, and there are lots of events going on on the campus. Uh, you get to be around a lot of uh, your new classmates. You meet a lot of people, make new friends, and uh, have a great time. So that's one of the the best traditions at Johnson and Wales. University of Colorado Boulder. Hi everybody, I'm Blake Trujillo. Um, I am colleagues with Brad who shared our presentation for University of Colorado Boulder. Um, I would say one of my favorite traditions, we are huge on football here. Our football games always get really rowdy. They're exciting, they're fun. Um, and our mascot here is Buffs. We are the Buffaloes here at CU Boulder. So we actually have a live Buffalo here on campus. Her name is Ralphie. They run her all throughout the field um, before every single football game. And we also have our official CU tailgate that's free, open to the public, called Ralphie's Corral, where you can take photos with Ralphie. Um, our marching band plays, there's games, giveaways, music, food. Um, so I would say my favorite tradition is just all of our wonderful football games with Ralphie. Stanford University. This is hard, and I always, I always have trouble just picking one. Um, I said this last presentation, but I'm going to stick with it. One of my favorites is Stanford Gives Back. It's when all of our Stanford community, all the students on campus will jump into Birmingham and being in such a big city, it's, it provides awesome opportunities to serve and give back to the community that we get to flourish from. And so um, like every year I got to join and jump in on different community service events, but it's not just me. Everyone at Stanford does it and we're all known for it. So that's probably one of my favorite weekends that we do around the year. We typically do it in the spring and um, it just, it just makes you feel good. It makes you realize that the world's bigger than yourself. And it's awesome that people know uh, Stanford students and Stanford in general, just having a giving heart. So I think that's, that's my favorite. Stanford gives back. Yeah. I will say that probably the most challenging part of this question is just limiting it to one of favorite campus tradition. So uh, next up, uh, University of Louisville. Ah, the presidential motorcade is driving right past my house right now, going to <laughs> Missing it, but I'm missing it for you guys. Uh, University of Louisville has albino squirrels on campus. So you got to keep your eye out for the albino squirrel. It's rare. You find it, you take a picture of it, and you get a free t-shirt. Fun. University of Mississippi. All right. So Emma, I'm kind of like you. I can never find the right one just because I think we have so many great traditions, but I will say we do have a new tradition and it's called locking the vault. So of course, I'm like a sports fan. Um, all of the fans, sports fans, Ole Miss fans, students, everyone in Oxford, we come together on the football field and we're getting ready to we listen to Led Zeppelin, it's blasting, and we're all in rhythm, and we're just locking the block, getting ready for the tunnel for the football players to cheer them on. So I really love that. We're all in unison. It's like a family. It's awesome. Well, thank you, all of you, for sharing those great campus traditions. I really love hearing those. Also want to thank you for sharing all the great information about each of your schools during this session tonight, and I want to thank all of our attendees for joining us for this session. When you close this window, there will be a link to a very quick four question survey. We'd appreciate any feedback you can provide. In about a week, you'll be able to find this session's recording as well as all of the other session recordings at the same website where you registered for this session. So you can find those recordings there. Once again, thank you to each of our representatives from the six schools that we've had present tonight. And I wanna thank you again for joining us for this session. Have a great rest of your evening. Take care. <laughs>